I want to turn from your specific roles and responsibilities to uh, the more philosophical notion of the chief information security officer or CISO. You you came to us to discuss some certain ways that the role and the perception of the CISO role has changed pretty recently. Uh, to put your words back at you, CISOs today are facing new challenges and increasing workloads consisting of more paperwork, time spent on risk assessments, going from two hours to 30 hours per assessment, and growing privacy regulations. At the same time, CISOs are being held more accountable for the security actions or inactions taken by the business. This struggle is only going to get harder given the new mandates and requirements laid out in the Biden administration's cyber strategy. So let's start with the comparatively distant past. What was the CISO role like when you started, and how has it changed in the meantime as regards expectations and responsibilities? Yeah, I, you know, the CISO role is kind of a unicorn when I when I started. Yeah. Uh, if you ran into somebody who had that title, they were traditionally, you know, at a Fortune 50, maybe in banking. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the rest of the security practitioners out there were managers or directors, part of the IT team. But you didn't see executives uh, as much. And, and you really didn't see security being anything more than kind of like the utilities. We need to do it. We need to do just enough. But at the end of the day, it wasn't really a business enabler. Um, I think for a lot of us, as we got into security, it was also technical skills were a must. You know, no one was looking to hire a CISO or a director of security that couldn't also come in and do some work. You know, so right. it was security and. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, even my role at Witness, uh, which is a, one of the first startups I started at, it's uh, now Varent. I was employed 20 something and along the way, you know, I started pitching the idea of, hey, we need a dedicated security role because some of our customers have this and spent a lot of years in the CEO's office really advocating for, you know, at least a director level role. And, you know, that eventually happened. But even still, it was kind of like what a lot of folks were probably experiencing today, but for sure 10 years ago, where I still reported to the CIO, the CIO took care of all the contract stuff, all the other things. And and I was much more just a part of, of his or her team. Uh, and we didn't have visibility. You know, the board didn't mm-hmm. care what was going on with security. It was the same thing as facilities. Right. Does it work? Great. Um, <laughs> I think today the role has evolved to the point where those technical st- skills, they're important depending on the size of the organization. And I think technical skills is really can you hold the level below you and maybe two levels below you accountable? You know, when mm-hmm. you say, hey, I think we need to implement this. And they say, well, that's not possible. You know, can I interpret that and go, I disagree or, OK, let's talk about how to make it possible. Yeah. It's not about, you know, I can't log into AWS and create an instance. That's not my skill set. Uh, mm-hmm. But I know enough to ask the questions and maybe be annoying and, and to get to the root of the answer. So I think right. technical skills are important, but they're no longer going to get you into that role. The business skills and the soft skills are so critical to success. And I do think, um, I believe that's a lot of how I succeeded in in my role is I had a background in public speaking and doing some other things. And so I was able to, you know, go in and at least have conversations where my motive was for the right reason Mm -hmm. and help the business understand. But today, you know, folks are looking for you know, educators. They're looking for, can you teach other teams what what we need to do, mm. why we need to do it? Mm-hmm. Can you translate a really hard requirement into something that every user in the company can understand at a minimum when to ask questions? Uh, communication, I think, I, you know, I say communication probably in every answer because ultimately, you know, what we do interrupts business we slow things down we create more work for other teams it's it's just part of the job and and unnecessary uh it's a necessary you know part of our job but you know we really have to communicate the why you know especially with engineers we need to do this um and then the partnership side of that so i think soft skills um, are really really critical risk management is definitely increased you know i've worked at a lot of orgs where we didn't do risk assessments because we just fixed all the problems because it felt like the right thing to do. Well, that was back in the days when there, there was eight or 16 solutions on that slide. Yeah, so right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you you're can not, just buy everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're not you're not making number 17 and it has to be a whole book. Yeah. Right. And so mm-hmm. now, you know, there's a plethora of of controls and approaches. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, GNA is still, you know, a big area that we have to control as far as what things cost. Um, and and how we execute on them. So I also think, 
you know, agility and a real understanding of how to break a problem down is kind of a critical um, need nowadays. You know, I know whenever mm-hmm. I talk to, you know, our customers and we talk about how they're solving their problems, uh, there's no one fit answer for everyone. But, you know, once you can align your solutions and align what your strategy is to how the business succeeds, you start getting a lot more people listening. And then I think ultimately having the thick skin that most of us have just to be able to share a message, maybe it didn't get heard, say it again in three months a different way, maybe a different way in six months. Mm -hmm. You may have to chip away, but the more you have those cases where you show that, hey, you know, I, I had a good idea. Yep. We chose to go another direction. Let's figure out why. And, you know, sometimes that's on us, too. And I think that's, yeah. to me, that education part of being able to say, you know, I don't think I explained that the right way. You know, I went into an executive's office and said, hey, this is a risk. And, you know, executives, that's their whole job. The CEO yeah. deals with risk every day. And so an unquantified we're at risk to him doesn't matter or to her doesn't matter. Yeah. First, being able to go, this matters because, and this is how this impacts our business. So, you know, that communication side is just such a critical component of success today. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, no, it's it's interesting. Like you said that uh, uh, when you started, it was you were you were pretty much asked not to not to speak. You know, like if it's working, <laughs> then we don't need to hear from you. And now it's it's sort of the opposite. Like you need to tell us, like help us tell understand what to do next, kind of thing. So. Uh, Well, you know, there was plausible deniability for a while. Now that board of directors are held accountable and CEOs are accountable, it is a little bit different. But, you know, that head in the sand approach was very prevalent when I started. Have you seen WorkBytes, the new security awareness training series from InfoSec? Our team produced this series with three E's in mind, making security awareness training entertaining, engaging, and educational. Just go to infosecinstitute.com slash free to learn more about this hilarious office comedy. And hey, let us know what you think about it.